ISIS may have lost some key leaders, but its online presence remains strong. Ever since breaking from al-Qaeda three years ago, the groups turned to social media to spread its message far beyond Iraq and Syria. It's created one of the most sophisticated propaganda machines of any terrorist organization. In the April issue of Wired, contributing editor Brendan Kerner writes about how ISIS is winning the social media war. Brendan, good morning. Good morning. How has ISIS gotten so far ahead on social media? I think a big part of it was um, thinking about media from the get-go. Back in 2004, when it was just an offshoot of al-Qaeda in Iraq, they were already thinking about how we disseminate videos of atrocities to attract very brutal young men to our cause. And ever since then, as the organization has evolved, it's really integrated media into its organization um, in a very um, cohesive way, hiring great talent, getting people who understand how social media works in particular. In the article, you talk about the methodology between al-Qaeda and ISIS and how they're so different, that al-Qaeda really wanted to control terror cells, and there's almost a more of an openness in ISIS. How did they change that strategy? Why is it, why has it been more effective? Well, I think one thing they did is they decentralized their media. Um, they have a very broad territory from Western Africa all, all the way to Chechnya in Russia. And they really decided to open up independent media offices to produce lots and lots of video content um, that will appeal to people who speak different languages from different cultures. And also getting on public networks like Twitter and Facebook and finding people who are young and use those services every day of their lives. So they become as much of a, a PR machine as a killing machine. Absolutely, they're very good at propaganda and that's crucial to them because they need to attract foreigners to their cause and to establish their identity as an empire that's growing and expanding all the time. It's interesting to hear you talk about the gradual nature of it all, that it doesn't start off radical. They basically look to, for disaffected young people. That's absolutely right. And if you look at their media, I mean, of course, we here in the West know about their atrocities they film and disseminate. But actually, there's a very small fraction of what they produce. Actually, most of their media is uh, videos that portray the caliphate, as they call it, the empire they said they say they're building, as almost a paradise, a place that has functioning schools, that has great social services, where people are happy, and where people who are foreigners can bring their families, their wives and children, and flourish. Hillary Clinton this week called on the U.S. to do more to counter the, the, uh, in the propaganda war here. Realistically, what can the U.S. do and what, if anything, can social media companies do? Well, I think it's difficult for Twitter and Facebook and companies like that to address this problem. Um, they can certainly hire more people and, and they have to actually try to suss out terrorist content on their networks. They've had some success, especially Twitter. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, um, these supporters around the world are very good at bouncing back from being expelled from these services. Mm -hmm. I think more important is when you have bad speech, terror speech, address it with better speech. We need to be creating content on par with what the Islamic State is creating mm -hmm. that's putting forth our narrative that their empire is not growing and expanding. It is, in fact, a cult that is evil. All right. Brendan Kerner, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you.